Hello and a very warm welcome to Great Clacton Parish and a warm welcome to St Mark's Church today. Welcome to our Sunday service and today here I'm surrounded by some wonderful flower displays. Uh, our Mothering Sunday at flower displays and display of gifts and so on that are to be um, enjoyed and uh, given out at our morning service here at St Mark's today but hopefully you can see them and enjoy them as well as our online congregation. Do let me welcome you if you're watching this as the service premieres. It should be around 11 o'clock. It uh, should be uh, Sunday the 19th of March and it's Mothering Sunday. And we have a, a lovely service here today. A service that the first half of which kind of focuses on a Mothering Sunday theme. And in the second half, we return to our teaching from Matthew's Gospel. Though not unconnected to the Mothering Sunday theme, we talk about uh, Jesus' teaching on being salt and light in the world. Once more, Mark Holdaway from Kirby and Great Holland helps us, uh, leads the first part of our service, and also um, will be uh, speaking to us today from that passage in Matthew uh, chapter 5. But first of all, as we start together, I'm going to use the collect for Mothering Sunday. And Mothering Sunday brings up a range of emotions. For, for many of us, um, we want to give thanks for our mothers. Uh, we want to give thanks for others in our lives who've, who've played mothering roles. Uh, grandmothers, uh, godmothers. Um, aunties, big sisters, those within our church family who've taken care of us and looked after us. And we want to be thankful for that. But as is usually the case when we think about things in family life, there's many ups and downs, aren't there? There's many sadnesses as well as joys. And often the thankfulness on Mothering Sunday is tinged with some sadnesses as well and those may be more for some than others and I guess we want to reflect that as we give thanks for mothers and all that they do we want to reflect the the, the, the sadnesses that that might bring to mind as well this is a lovely collect that we start our service with today God of compassion whose son Jesus Christ the child of Mary shared the life of a home in Nazareth and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, in just a moment or two, we're going to sing a great hymn, Tell Out My Soul, a hymn that's based on the words of Mary, the mother of Jesus, who we've just referred to in that prayer. Um, as she realises she's pregnant with the Saviour, she sings of God, her Saviour. And to lead us to that song and introduce our theme for today, I'm going to hand over to, to Mark, Mark Holdaway, who will lead us through the first part of our service together. Some words from Isaiah 49, very appropriate for this morning, Mothering Sunday. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. The Lord replies, can a mother forget her baby and have no compassion on the child she's born, though she may forget? I will not forget you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And we do that in our first hymn, Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord.
Uh, well, today, Mothering Sunday is about uh, giving thanks for mothers, but it's also about the love of families uh, and also of the church family as well. So as we uh, celebrate uh, Mother's Day and give thanks, uh, but it also need to remember it may not be quite the day for you either. And if that's the case, then I do hope that your family and church family are a delight to you today. We uh, thank God for mums. We pray for mums, whether it's going well or if times are tough. We pray for those for whom thinking of mum or motherhood makes them sad. We remember good times, we remember missed opportunities, and we remember God's goodness to us. We say sorry, maybe for the way we've been as mums, the way we've treated mums, and the way we treat the most loving person of all. And so we come to our confession and we pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you've made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent, making us new and contrite hearts, so that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Isaiah 66. As a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. So Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we respond in praise to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen.
We say together the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Vir Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift and love of mothers, for their care and concern. Thank you too for grandmothers, great grandmothers, and for all of our families. Thank you for the joys that they have shared with us. Thank you, God, for the plans and the pains they have borne for us. Thank you for all that they give us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, a really big thank you to Mark Holdaway for leading us through that part of our service. And we started there with the song that Mary sang, or maybe the poem that she said, when she found out she was pregnant with Jesus. Um, Tell out my soul that the glory of the Lord. Uh, we, she sang about God, her saviour, who had changed her life around. And that led us to our confession, where we admitted that our own um, family lives are not what they should be, among many other things that we get wrong in life. But as we came out of that time of confession, praising God once more, come people of the risen King, we remembered that we're one family together. Uh, whatever our feelings today, uh, whether we're men or women, wherever we're from in the world, we're one family drawn together by the risen Lord Jesus, one people of his. We've also remembered that in our creeds that it was through the Virgin Mary that our Saviour came into this world. And he's the one who draws us together as that family. And so we could pray to our Heavenly Father, as one family, our Father who art in heaven. Well, we'll return to our Mothering Sunday theme in just a moment or two, but let me pause for one or two notices. Uh, there's a new notice sheet uh, out uh, this week for our regulars. Hopefully that has got to you one way or another. Um, do uh, ask for one if you haven't received one or do pick one up from the back of our churches. And Inside, I'm reminded that tonight, uh, the 19th of March, is our last in our Alpha Course series. Do please pray uh, for that. But as well as our regular um, children's uh, and youth events during the week, there's also Wednesday worshippers at St Mark's at 11 o'clock on Wednesday. There's together service um, in the church hall at St John's, 11 o'clock on um, Thursday, Thursday the 23rd. Uh, though there's refreshments beforehand, any time from 10.15. And then on Thursday evening, do let me encourage you to come to our fourth uh, Lent meeting. doesn't matter if you haven't been to all of them or any of them uh, before. We're thinking this week about the story of the prodigal son, that wonderful story that Jesus told, and thinking deeply about its meaning for us and uh, for our church. At 7 for 7.15, refreshments from 7, the meeting from 7.15. We promise to, to finish no later than half eight 
and we've been finishing before that every time that this so far uh, this month so we've been doing well with that um, and then on Saturday Saturday morning Saturday the 25th it's our Easter coffee morning do pop along to the church hall uh, for that if you can um, it would be great to see you there uh, as well as the, the, the normal great cakes and uh, teas and coffees and refreshments there will be some Easter things out on the stalls as well do, do uh, come along to that any time between 9.30 and 11.30 if you can and then just to say um, on Saturday week that's the 1st of April um, we're having a newcomers uh, morning a newcomers uh, welcome morning um, we haven't had one of this for ages so if you're new-ish to the church, that's any time in the last few years since we last had a newcomer's morning, and you haven't been to one before, you'd be very welcome to come along at 10 o'clock to St John's on Saturday the 1st of April. It'd be great to see you there. Do get in touch with the church office if you can to let us know that you're coming. Well, we've got a few birthdays this week as well. Not as many as the last couple of weeks. But this week it is Carmel's birthday and it's Connie's birthday. So we're going to sing to them uh, just now. To Carmel and to Connie, to anybody else with a birthday that I don't know about, we sing. Da 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 da. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Carmel and Connie. Happy birthday to you. Do you give them a round of applause? If you see them this week, or you can get in touch with them, do send them a greeting. That would be great. Well, we return to our Mothering Sunday theme just now. In a moment or two, we're going to have a lovely video uh, which reflects on Mothering Sunday, a video from uh, Go Chatter Videos. Reflecting on how mums might feel and how uh, others may feel on Mothering Sunday and encouraging us to give thanks for all who've played those mothering roles in our lives. To lead us there, we're going to sing a song that we sing, I think, each Mothering Sunday with the children at St Mark's. Always remember, never forget, never forget to say thank you. And then after uh, the video, um, another song. One that, well, it helps us once more to say sorry for when we fail in the family life, as we each are bound to do. Uh, we sing, for the angry words I've spoken, and we ask for God's forgiveness and God's strength to try and put some of those things right. So first we sing, then the video, then we sing again. Lots of singing today. Thank you um, to, to Pam and uh, uh, to Jackie for these first few songs. And that second song, which is a prayer in itself, will lead us to our prayers of intercession today. Some lovely prayers that have been recorded for us by Catherine.
For lots of us, Mother's Day is a really happy day. A day to celebrate our mums and say a big thank you for all they do. For their love, hard work, wisdom and comfort. For walking with us through the highs and the lows. For being there through the tears and big steps and struggles and sorrows and joys and laughter. But for some of us, Mother's Day is a hard day, a sad day. Some of us had mums who didn't look after us well. Some of us are remembering mums who are no longer here and children we have lost. Some of us would love to be mums but can't. Our relationships might be complicated, strained or broken. But we can still be thankful for the many women in our lives who have nurtured, cared for and loved us. Women who have been mothers to us in lots of different ways. Who spend time with their nephews and nieces. Who hang out with teenagers at the youth group who pray for us each week and encourage us to keep going, who teach us about the best parent, God, who adopts us into his family forever. So whether you're a birth mum, a foster carer, an adoptive mum, or longing to be a mum, thank you to all the mothers in our lives, whatever they look like, for all you do, and say and are, seen and unseen. Thank you. For the angry words I've spoken, for my hurtful, selfish ways, help me learn to say sorry lord i pray for the promises i've broken for the times i've disobeyed hear the words of my confession lord I Lord, I 
Lord, thank you for spring and the signs we see around us of new life. The flowers peeping up through the ground, the blossom appearing on the trees, catkins and fresh grass. All of these wonderful signs point us to you. All these gifts of new life show your love for us. A time of renewal in this Lenten time as we move towards Easter Sunday when we celebrate the ultimate renewal, the ultimate celebration of new life in you and your resurrection. Amen. Today, Lord, we celebrate mothers. We thank you, Lord, that you lived the life of an earthly home. You knew the role of parents. We read in the Bible of Mary's wonder at your birth, her worry when she lost you, and her tears when she saw you on the cross. We thank you, Lord, for these stories of your earthly family. And we thank you, Lord, that you have invited us to be part of your heavenly one. We pray for mothers around the world today. We think of mothers in Turkey and Syria, mothers in Malawi and the surrounding areas. These mothers have lost everything they tried to build up for their families due to natural disasters, earthquakes and floods. They have lost their homes and their security, and even in some cases, their children and family members. Be with them, Lord. Show your compassion on these people. Help us, Lord, to be your hands and heart as we give what we can to support the rescue attempts. We pray for your wisdom, Lord, for those that receive the funds, that they will know how best to distribute the, these monies. Lord Jesus, hold these people in your hands. We pray also, Lord, for mothers in war-torn countries. We pray for families in the Ukraine, in Russia, in Israel and in the Gaza. In places where life is so unstable, and children are in danger at every turn. Lord, please bring peace to these regions and others like them, that the children will be able to grow up in a better world than the one we are currently giving them. Amen. And finally, we pray for the mothers around the world trying to raise their children to know you, Lord, and to live a life that is Christ-led. It is becoming harder and harder to protect our children from the evils of the world as so many nations have turned from you. Give courage and protection to parents and children that stand against the turning tide and declare that you are Lord and that you will win the final battle. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of mothers. May these bearers of life also be the bearers of your word. May they teach and train their children in the way they should go, so that when they are old, they will not depart from it. Even when the children are already grown, help mothers to sow the seeds that will bear the fruit of your spirit. Just as a mother's work is never done, so her prayers for her children will never end. May the Holy Spirit guide each mother as she seeks wisdom. Illuminate the scriptures to help her. Help her to encourage her children to honour you. Give her a church family that will come alongside her and show her the love of Christ to her and her family. Place godly mentors in her life and also in the lives of her children. May they seek you and find you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much to Catherine for those lovely prayers, helping us to pray and thank God for the good things he gives us and to pray, especially pray for mothers we know and mothers around the world. Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, while we focused on Mothering Sunday for the first part of the service, we are returning to our um, sermon theme uh, for the second part of the service. Uh, we return to hear some more of 
uh, Mark Holderway's teaching on Matthew chapter 5. Uh, he's going to read the next part of Matthew chapter 5, the next part of the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus talks about his followers being salt and light. But of course, that's not totally removed from the theme for, for Bothering Sunday. We know that in our family life, um, as everywhere else, but uh, maybe especially a challenge in our family life to be salt and light, whether we're parents, uh, whether we're children, whether we're part of our church family, we can be that in, um, to those um, immediately around us and to the wider community as well. So it's over to Mark now as he reads from Matthew chapter 5 and then uh, speaks about it and helps us to think about it. Our reading today is Matthew chapter 5 and verses 13 to 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfil them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These verses are the picture uh, of perhaps something you might know. The person who comes into the room and influences others for good. Uh, they come in and they do good for others and they do good for others. They lift others up and they bring goodness into the place where they are. That is what these verses are about. Uh, they are addressed to you, to us, to followers of Jesus. That's the group of people who are sitting around Jesus as he teaches. How then can we be an influence for good? Well, we're given two images. The first of the images is salt. Let me read verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. There are many uses for salt aren't there? In our house we've used it for washing out uh, someone's eye, we've used it, we seem to use it an awful lot in the dishwasher, it goes on food to add flavour and it's even been used as weed killer. There is of course the added use uh, that uh, we remember of it as a preservative added to food to keep it. And most of those uses were around in Bible times but the main one seems to be to add flavour. That's how it's used most in the Bible. Salt was added to sacrifices to make them flavoursome. The idea was really of God consuming the sacrifice and salt was added to make them flavoursome. And that is what is really highlighted in our passage as well, the flavour. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? But we can, wherever it is, we can sum it up like this. Salt is added to things to make them better, to flourish rather than simply survive, an influence for good. The second image is light. It's on top of a pole and the idea of the city on top of the hill is the same idea. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. 
Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. They put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Of course, we know that Jesus is the light of the world. He brought light and life and grace and joy, clarity and direction. And so are we to do the same. A city on a hill is a place of safety and welcome, isn't it? And so should we be. And we're told, of course, that as Jesus is the light of the world, so are to we be. Think of Jesus ascending to heaven. And soon after, what do we get? We get his apostles with flames of fire on them. That's not the image of a bonfire, but it's the image of a candle. They became the light for the world. This is a call for Christians to have an influence for good on the world around them. We are to be salt and light. We are to be salty and lighty. And we're to do it by, verse 16, doing good deeds. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. It is pretty remarkable, isn't it? What difference does doing good make? You might think, I wonder what difference it really makes. What difference does choosing to do good because you're a follower of Jesus? What difference does that make? What difference does it make when we say, shall I take the easy way out and not do good? Or shall I take the tough way out and do good because I follow Jesus? Well, it makes every difference, doesn't it? And there's a challenge, isn't there? These words were originally heard by the Israel of Jesus's day. And they were in danger of being no different, no influence for good in the world around them. They were in danger of joining in with the world's evil rather than doing good in the midst of the world's evil. Think of this question, how salty and how lighty were the Jewish leaders around the trial and execution of Jesus. But the challenge is still the same for us, isn't it? It's there in these verses. If the salt loses its saltiness, or neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. The image of salt was really at this. It was not a pure salt they knew in those days. The salt was mixed up with its impurities. And often if water flowed through it, if it got wet and water flowed through it, the actual real salt of the mixture would be washed away, leaving the impurities and the, uh, the substance looking no different, no different to how it was before. But the saltiness had gone and all that was left was something fit for putting on the road. Or, or the light. Uh, if you put a bucket over a light, well, you might as well just turn the light off. The light might as well not be there. We are to be salt and light, doing good and being good for those around us. Well, thank you so much to Mark once more for that challenging teaching uh, today, encouraging us to be salt and light with all we know around and in our communities. Well, that brings us towards the end of our time together today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us uh, this special Mothering Sunday. But thank you for joining us in, the, in prayer in praising God together and in learning from him through the Bible. If there's anything that has struck you today or you want to get in touch for any reason, do contact me on the normal email address mark.gtclacton at gmail.com. And do keep in touch with one another as our online congregation, if you can. We're going to sing a great hymn together. One that reminds us that we want to, to live our lives, um, whether we're mothers, whether we're parents, whether we've other mothering roles uh, in our families, in our community, or just as members of our church family 
as, as Christians. We want to say, in Christ alone, my hope is found. And then we want to live that hope out in our lives. This great hymn uh, that Rachel leads us is going to be uh, the, the, the last in our service today. And then Mark Holdaway will lead us in a final prayer before a special little treat at the end to play us out today. Let's sing together in Christ alone. And now, may you continue in him, so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. So we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.